is it called Bridgeless Canyon? Because there's no bridge across that canyon. That makes sense. Why do you need to get a pizza over there in the first place? Well, today, Fluster Crust Pizza received an order from Herb the Hermit Crab, who lives over there. Where's my poppin' hot pizza? He sounds crabby. You see the super neato power delivery pizza badge? Yes. It means I've never delivered a cold pizza, and that is not something I plan to start today. Mr. McFluster, you're in luck. I've got just the tool for your pizza problem. I call it the Pie Flyer. Just grab your pizza pie, load her up, and let it fly! Stop! Mr. Bon Bon, Bridgeless Canyon is a strictly no flying pie zone. Well, then I can fly the Clark Copter. Uh uh uh, no copters. I could use my glitter cycle. No throwing, no copters, no cycles, or vehicles of any kind. Um. Huh. Well, what if we built a bridge? Clark? That is so normal, it just might work. Group high five! Just hurry! Once the thermometer turns fully blue, the pizza won't be piping hot anymore, and I can't deliver it! One bridge coming right up! Fix it, Force! It's time to build a bridge! Almost finished. One bridge made of wood. Wow, we! You really did it. And since it's made of wood, it's sturdy, strong, and smells like sawdust. Just a few more pieces to go. Follow us, Mr. McFluster. That's all. Oh, hello, Herb. I know what you and I told. Yes, your piping hot pizza is on the way. Huh? I wonder why nobody's ever built a bridge here. Huh? Do you hear that? Ah! eating beetles! Run! Oh, just call me Mr. Pizza in the morning! Ah! Ah! Thanks, buddy. You're welcome. A group high five? What just happened? Bridge eating beetles. Oh, wh what? That's a thing? Yup. They're in my book, 100 Beasts of Blunderburg. Bridge-eating beetles love to eat. Uh, let me guess, bridges? How'd you know? They especially like wood, but they're known to eat <gasps> any type of bridge. I'm Neil Ostrich reporting live from way out west of Blunderburg, where the sun is hot, but Herb's cocoa is not. Can the Fix-It Force help Herb the Hermit Crab heat it up? Here they are now! Who are you? What you want? Mr. Herb, it's the Fix-It Force. We are here to solve your not-so-hot cocoa problem. Of course. Sorry I snipped at you. Without a cup of hot cocoa in the morning, I, I just ain't myself. No problem, Herb. I'm the same way before my first banana. Now, where's this cold cocoa? Right here. Normally, I would heat it over my campfire, but now there's no fires allowed. On account of them tumbling tumbleweed. Ah, this problem's no problem. See, we're in the desert where it's hot. If we leave your cocoa out in the sun, I'm sure it'll heat right up. This thermometer will tell us when the cocoa is hot and ready to sip. Hmm. Huh. The cocoa is getting warmer, but Chico, I don't think the sun is going to get the cocoa hot enough. Oh, I'm getting crabby. When I get this crabby, I start howling like this. Oh, 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 oh! Hey, you got anything with more power in that there belt of yours to heat this mug up? You know something? I think I do. Coco, you've been cold for a while now. That's about to change. Because this monkey makes waves. Microwaves. Yeah! I call it the micro microwave. Small enough to fit into my belt, powerful enough to heat up the coldest cup of cocoa. Now, where can I plug it in? Plug it in? There ain't no plugs out here for miles. Wah, wah. 
Fix it, Force. Get out your umbrellas. It's time for a brainstorm. Ideas. Talk to me, people. When I want to make my food hot, I add hot sauce. <laughs> well, Clark, hot sauce is spicy hot. We need temperature hot. I got it! Oh, it's the thing that always warms me up. A bedtime story and a warm blanket. All right, Fix it, Force. It's story time. <clears throat> James and the Giant Peanut. Once upon a time, there was an elephant, and James lived happily ever after in the Giant Peanut. The end. Uh, well, Clark, what a refreshing story. What's our thermometer say? Oh, still colder than a polar bear's toes. Oh, oh, oh. oh peanuts. Oh, hang on, Chico. <laughs> She did. Nice work, Tiny. I can see again. And we can steer again. This is Coleslaw. Can you take the wheel while we figure out how to stop? I'm on it. Guys, the good news is you're finally off the busy streets. What's the bad news? You're heading towards Stinky Sock Canyon. Where? Stinky Sock Canyon, the smelliest drop off in all of Blunderberg. If that speeding van doesn't find a way to break, this story will stink in more ways than one. You know, because of the stinky socks. Oh, no! Hey, how do you get in here? A newsman never reveals his secrets. I thought that was magicians. Focus, Clark! We gotta help! Right, right. Is there any sticky mud you can drive through? That might slow you down. Huh, no mud. Well, wait, we might have something even stickier. Clark, fire the glue cannon. Attention, glue detected. Activating non-stick spray. No! Our own anti-stickiness systems are too anti-sticky! We need to try something else! Ahoy, mateys! Seems to me like ye could use a good old-fashioned anchor! Yeah! Oh, anchor, do me proud and dig into the ground below to stop that van! Glitter Blast activated. Yar! Shiver me timbers! It's okay. We're just speeding towards Stinky Sock Canyon in a runaway van going about a million miles an hour. Just gotta... Activate Banana Break. Okay, we need to stop Tool Force One. Speed bumps didn't slow us down. Glue didn't slow us down. The anchor didn't slow us down. If only Mrs. Coleslaw hadn't fallen down that chute. Shoot! Parachute! Blazing bananas, that's it! We can use a parachute to stop Tool Force One. Of course! Parachutes create drag, but the heavier something is, the bigger the parachute needs to be, remember? And Tool Force One is huge! We definitely don't have a parachute that big, Chico! But we've got knitting needles and a whole lot of yarn! Monkey with a tool belt. <gasps> the banana phone! Chico Bonbon. Bon. You got a problem, we can solve them.